Well, today is January the 1st, 2024, and I'm going to begin the year uh, the way I want to carry on, and that's getting out there and doing something. So I've come down to my uh, area where I do my zeroing. Uh, it's a beautiful morning, the sun's out. Um, I've just helped the farmer put a calf back in. Um, they do tend to escape and get under the electric fence. But I'm here down at the uh, the area where I do my zeroing. I've brought the 300 blackout out today. Uh, it's a Brock and Norris custom built um, 300. Uh, I've got a couple of uh, different rounds that I'm trying out today. I've got some factory uh, sub X 190. Uh, that's Hornaday, and I've got some home loads which are shooting the 110 grain with around about six and a half ounce, uh, six and a half grains of self raising flour put behind it so they are ultra subsonic um, but they're very good for close work uh, in very built up areas where noise is very very um, prevalent and you have to be very cautious about where you're shooting it so I'm setting out my target the rifles already zeroed at 50 yards uh, I've got three zeros on it I've got three zero stops at 50 75 and 100 yards I'm just going to put it out just to make sure that everything's on and everything's working okay uh, it's built on a 700 action. Uh, it's got a ASE uh, moderator on it. I'll show you um, the picture, uh, the video of it uh, as it's set up. But yeah, it's a beautiful morning here. I'm just going to turn the camera around so you can have a good look. And um, oh, by the way, yeah, new, new sunroof in the shooting bus. Had a lot of work done on the shooting bus um, over the last uh, couple of weeks by a company quite local to me who specialise in Freelander. Uh, this truck, um, although Freelander is classed by many as not a uh, fantastic Land Rover, for me it's absolutely perfect. I've got the commercial version which is completely boarded out in the back, um, ideal for shooting. Uh, and I use this truck all the time, I've had it for five years now, uh, it actually sailed through the MOT. Um, back at the end of November so it's back on the road I've had uh, some money spent on it over the last few weeks um, unfortunately the story goes along the lines that uh, the post office bless their heart and soul I, I traveled up Scotland and mistakenly took the keys with me to the to the truck uh, <laughs> that left my wife in a little bit of limbo because of going to take the dogs out and do the horses so me stupidly decided to post them back Thank you to the Royal Mail and the Post Office. You guessed it, they lost my keys. Full set of keys, the only set of keys I had with it, along with one of my Spyderco knives, which is on the key ring, which I've actually now replaced. And I'll just show you the, the little Spyderco on my key ring. It's an ace knife, I love it, but I had to replace it because the Post Office and the Royal Mail lost my original one. So, story goes, posted it, they delivered the envelope with nothing inside it. So I um, put it onto a Facebook group who are Lando, Land Rover Freelander owners and asked uh, anybody out there if anybody could help. And a lot of the comments were, ooh, that's going to cost you a fortune. Uh, that's a whole new ECU and locks, barrels, the works, which I have to be honest, it was. Uh, but I went to a local company uh, just down the A5 from me in Cannock uh, and they absolutely pulled it out of the bag. It was a week before Christmas and they replaced all the locks. They replaced the ECU. She's now fully up and running. Uh, I have to give a big shout out to another friend of mine who come and did a specialist recovery because the vehicle was locked and it was in gear and the handbrake was on. So we had to put it on skids to get it up on there. I wish I'd have videoed that because he did an amazing job. So big shout out to my mate uh, Gaz who, mate, thank you so much. I'm really appreciative of everything you've done. Um, so, whilst it was in the garage, I decided to give it a complete overhaul. So, um, for ooh, a good 18 months now, it's been firing on just three cylinders. So, the guys worked on it. It's now fully functioning and working properly. They've put new brakes all the way around. Uh, the handbrake now works very, very well. Um, they've polished uh, the headlights because they were dull, because that's how they go after age. Put me a new sunroof in, they replaced the um, metal sunroof, which caused a lot of condensation, and put a glass sunroof in, which is fabulous. It's also very handy when you're on the top and you're squeaking foxes now, so I use polystyrene to squeak foxes. And it was always a bit awkward reaching over to the windscreen to to scrape and, and squeak the foxes, but now I've got 
that on the top of the the truck it's ace because i can sweep the polystyrene foxes come into the polystyrene they've also done a lot of work all around new bushes new new bearings on the props new oh you name it they've done it done an amazing job uh it's going back in uh in two weeks time to have a light bar fitted uh i'm trying to get a winch sorted so i can get a winch on it as well so we're completely self-sufficient so yeah that is the history of the Freelander. She's now up and running. She's the best truck I've ever had. She's never got stuck in any situation. I have got some serious tyres on her. I'll edit and put in a clip here of the tyres that I've got on. They are the uh, Insta Turbos uh, Dakars. They are fantastic. Um, but yeah, never got stuck. Great truck. Anyway, back to the point of the video. Uh, I'm going to go and set up the rifle now. Put a target out at 50 yards just to make sure that she's still on. And I'm going to zero it at uh, 50, 7,500. Make sure that she hasn't lost zero over the last... Wow, she hasn't been out for about three or four months. So it'd be nice to, to actually put a few shots through her. And then I'm going to put a gong out and see how far we can stretch her. Uh, so, yeah. Tune in. I'll be back in a minute. Take care. So, the back of the Freelander. There we go. I've brought a gong. Uh, what is it? Four-inch gong. And a spike from the steel target. From the steel target company, I'll make it a little bit louder if I can. I've got my three targets, three hundred black cat in the bag. As you can see, the back of the truck, absolutely amazing uh, for shooting. Fits everything in. Uh, can fit carcasses in there if I need to have deer or whatever. I'm thinking of putting a winch, probably at the far end there, so I can winch deer in carcasses in because uh, I'm getting old now and. It really does make hard work. Also carrying the Freeland. It's a beautiful morning. Look at that sky. Absolutely stunning morning here in, uh, in Shropshire. God, I'm so lucky to live in such a beautiful place. Um, carry a lot of things in the back of the truck. Uh, I've got a chain. Um, I've got uh, emergency start uh, chargers. Uh, Pumps. These are amazing. If you ever get a flat battery or you need to charge anything rapidly, can't recommend these enough. They're absolutely fantastic. Uh, great product. Never let me down. I've got toe straps. I've got uh, all sorts. Carry spare batteries. But yeah, absolutely brilliant truck. And of course, I mustn't forget the most important thing. My empty flask full of tea. Because that's the most important thing when you're out zero and you've got to have a cup of tea. Just walking out onto the field, so uh, I'm going to zero it out there. Uh, there is an incline you can't really see very well, but it does slope up, so there is a safe backstop, and there is nothing around here for miles anyway. There's no houses, there's no livestock on this side. Uh, the only livestock I've got on that side, I've got some cows, but on this side there's nothing, uh, so it's all safe and secure. I'm just going to walk out now. So spike in the ground. Beautiful thing about these uh, targets from Still Target Company is the lock on and they don't ever come off. Great targets, really decent. Uh, so I've put the gong out at 100 yards. My target board is back here and obviously my truck in the distance. I'll be shooting off the, the top of my truck. I always find it a lot easier to shoot off the top of the truck. Uh, I'm not really uh, a fan of what can I say I'm not really a fan of uh, Bentress shooting absolutely stunning day uh, because I like to shoot exactly as I do when I'm out in the field and I normally shoot off the top of my truck uh, occasionally if I'm uh, out where I can't get the truck which is very very rare I do actually use pair of shooting sticks, the stable sticks, get them from Bushwear, uh, incredible value for money, I find them much more sturdy. I've also got a bog pod, tripod, uh, don't use it very often, uh, but very occasionally comes in handy. Look how wet the ground is, that's so much rain here. Right, I'm going to get the rifle out, set up, ready to shoot.
This is a rifle. It's Brock and Norris custom build, built on a Howard 1500 action with a Bell and Carlson stock. And it's topped off with an ASC moderator. But as you can see, the rifle is very, very short and very compact. On top, I've got a millet scope with, uh, it's a 4-16 side parallax. And it's got different uh, zero, and that's 75, that's 50, 75 yards and 100 with little isotopes on there so they glow in the dark so you can see them in the dark so you never get confused. Uh, absolutely amazing little scope. Does what it says on the tin. And as you can see, a really nice custom rifle by Mike Norris. So very stupidly, um, to conclude the video, I completely forgot to video the results of the shooting. So uh, I'm back in my uh, little haven. Uh, it's my little workshop uh, that I use. I've got uh, where I keep all my fishing gear and, and, and bits and pieces. So in conclusion, I'm going to turn the camera around now and show you the groups that I shot. Um, the first lot is with 110 grains and the second group is with the 190. Um, I'm quite pleased with the results. Um, to be honest with you, there isn't a great deal of difference um, at, at the distances I'm shooting uh, with a drop, and you can probably get away with it. But you have to excuse the light shining off my bald head. Um, to be honest with you, I probably wouldn't change um, the zero, so I can shoot the two uh, without really that much change in point of impact. So I'm just going to turn the camera around now and we'll have a look. So this is the uh, five shot group that I took with the uh, 110 grain. And then I took a three shot group with the 190 grain. And as you can see, there is a great deal of difference. Um, it was a bit windy and I, I was shooting off the top of the truck. So forgive the groups. They are normally a lot tighter than that. But... I just want to show you uh, on the. This is a a group that I want to show you. Um, other than the group I did, and what I did, I had the um, rifle set at seventy five yards, uh, which is that one there. I then took a shot at, with a fifty yard, and you can obviously see the difference in the drop. Uh, and this one is the one that zeroed at hundred yards, so you can see that there is a, a fair amount of drop between the the fifty. Um, and the 100 yards and in between you can see that it is worth having that isotope on there just to change the zero at night but as far as point of impact is concerned with both I don't think there's any need really to change it so yeah in conclusion it's a great little rifle for uh, those close proximity areas where you're shooting uh, where noise is really really important you have to keep the noise down to stop alerting neighbours etc that you're actually shooting uh, we have to be quite sensitive when we're out shooting. I think you guys know that. But I'd like to thank you all for tuning in. Uh, it's uh, been a lovely day. We timed it perfectly because the clouds come over now and it started to rain. So thanks very much, guys. Uh, look forward to making the next video and keeping in touch with you. Uh, please click like and subscribe. It really does help. Uh, I'm trying to build the channel. I'm going to do more and more of these videos. Uh, hopefully get some live footage as well when we're out shooting at night. It's always difficult when we're out shooting at night because of the lighting, etc. But I'd like to go out and, and show you guys what we actually do at night. So thanks very much. Please click like and subscribe. Cheers, guys.